so my name is uh, John Vucetic. I'm an associate professor at Michigan Technological University where I teach wildlife management and population biology. And I also uh, lead the research on the wolves and moose of Isle Royal, which is the longest study of any predator prey system in the world. Could you walk us through what happened with the peer review panel where first you were told you were on the panel and now you're not? Fish and Wildlife Service made a proposed rule and they have to engage a, a peer review process where scientists are invited to evaluate whether it's a good proposal. They usually contract it out as a way of making sure that it's done independently and without bias. Two contractors uh, had selected me, along with others, as being qualified. One of those two contractors uh, got the contract. Apparently, uh, they uh, were told that certain people could not be on the list of people who could be peer reviewers. And the people who they thought would be inappropriate were people who signed a letter uh, sent to the Department of Interior uh, explaining to them why they thought that the proposed rule was an inappropriate rule. And so that was removed. The problem is this. You expect a peer reviewer to be qualified, and then after being qualified and looking at the evidence, you expect them to pass judgment. And so what I had done, along with 16 other scientists, is we had read that document. We're all experts and qualified in the field. We passed judgment on it, and we wrote a letter saying what we thought about it. In that letter, we were doing exactly what is expected of a peer reviewer. Do you feel like the letter signed by you and the other scientists constitutes advocacy work? Well, I, you know, I think our culture has an inappropriate relationship with that word. If you pass judgment but don't offer any reasons, or if you pass judgment and are simply unqualified to, well, that's inappropriate. I and, and several others pass judgment, and we pass judgment after becoming familiar with the materials and based on our qualified knowledge of the topic. And so I, I don't think that's advocacy. That's just passing judgment. Well, in a scientific community, usually there's an editor, and an editor is, is, just as, is just as interested in why are you saying this is good or bad as much as whether you think it's good or bad. The Fish and Wildlife Service appears to be picking peer reviewers on the basis of what they think rather than on the basis of why are they thinking what they think or are they qualified to think that. Do you feel that gray wolves are ready to be delisted? Uh, no, and, uh, and there's two reasons for it. The Endangered Species Act says that a species should be considered endangered if it's at risk of extinction throughout all or a significant portion of its range. That phrasing is verbatim from the Endangered Species Act, and it suggests that to be recovered, a species has to be somewhat well distributed throughout its former range. And wolves only occupy about 15% of their former range right now. And that doesn't meet the standard of the Endangered Species Act. The second problem is when the Fish and Wildlife Service explains why it is that wolves can't do any better than they're doing right now. People are intolerant, and that prevents them from being there. And that ends up being a gross oversimplification of the relationship between humans and wolves. The point of the Endangered Species Act is not to merely describe the threats to extinction, which is all that the Fish and Wildlife Service is doing right now when they say wolves can't be here because people are intolerant of them. The purpose of the Endangered Species Act is to mitigate against those threats. The Fish and Wildlife Service has the capacity to mitigate against that threat, the threat of intolerance. And they have demonstrated for 40 years that they absolutely have the ability to do so. And the primary way in which the Fish and Wildlife Service has mitigated against the threat of human intolerance is mainly by preventing state governments from instituting public harvests that are at such a high rate that it prevents wolves from expanding their geographic range. 
the greatest threat to wolves at this moment is the intolerance of the Fish and Wildlife Service to fulfill its mandate. What do you think the general public should know about this event and this process? Is there anything that the public can do to get involved? The most important concern that wolves raise for us is that we're not able as a society to understand a very simple question, which is what counts as an endangered species and what doesn't. And if we can't answer that question, we're we're very unlikely to achieve conservation. It's a legal question, it's a scientific question, but it's also a a value question, it's a cultural question, and it's one that every citizen has a stake in, and we're not going to get a good answer to that kind of a question unless we have conversations about it.